the new Savage A22. Let's check it out. There's something about getting a 22 rimfire, taking it out to the range, and just enjoying yourself. I think part of that has to do with, of course, the low recoil, the lower noise, but uh, probably one of the biggest things is the expense of the ammo. And now that 22 long rifle is coming back, you know, you can take three or four boxes of 22 long rifle, sit at a bench, and shoot, and just not feel like you're spending a whole bunch of money. Uh, and that's one of the things I love to do lately. I've really enjoyed getting out the 22 rimfires. Uh, Savage just introduced their brand new A22. Um, a couple of years ago, they released their 17 HMR model, which was the A17, and then last year, the A22 Magnum. And so this year, the A22 has hit the market. And a great little semi-automatic rifle, uh, very smooth action, and one of the big coups of this rifle, though, is the AccuTrigger. It's like having a competition trigger in a stock rifle. Uh, it's not that it's super light, but it's extremely consistent and very safe. Uh, with this little trigger shoe, it's just a very smooth uh, action. That is going to lead to really good accuracy, and there's nothing better than having a 22 long rifle that is a tack driver. Now Savage has updated all the rimfire rifles and a lot better modular stocks. Uh, this is a, a polymer stock and it just fits well. When you're sitting at the bench, it just seems to naturally be in place to where it needs to be. Uh, the action is smooth. Um, of course, I've got one of the Bushnell 3x9 rimfire optics on here. And then we have a Harris bipod as well. And of course, these are not included. And the stock being so ergonomic, it is very well balanced. And whether you're sitting at a bench, whether you're hunting out in the woods, or whatever you're doing with this rifle, you know, it just is a really comfortable fit. Let's make sure the gun is unloaded, drop your magazine, check the chamber, and it's clear. The receiver's drilled and tapped, and it does come with weaver bases, as you see. The rear sight does have a flip down blade. Uh, that way it allows for this scope to be mounted. Uh, the scope is mounted on medium rings and this is adjustable. And then you have a front blade. It is black. Uh, you can remove these. There are set screws here that if you need to remove it, if you want to put a different sight on here, you can. One thing that Savage does well though is they crown their barrels uh, and that keeps, you know, for them to get damaged, especially with a little 22 that you're carrying around with you. Uh, you can already see where, you know, I bumped it around a little bit on the muzzle already, but with that recessed crown, it just helps with the accuracy. It has a pistol grip, uh, with this design on it, um, it helps you to be able to really get comfortable with your grip. It's got a more of a natural uh, angle to it. And then, of course, right here with this divot with your thumb coming up. And right here at the forearm, it has these raised areas, uh, which is a really nice design. And it gives you a little bit of a palm swell with each of these, but yet you have something to grip hold of. But I was really glad to see the old Savage logo uh, at the cap of the pistol grip. I think on the B-17 model, they had something a little bit different here, and I was kind of disappointed. Uh, and, but here you see they've got the old Chieftain, and this is very reminiscent of the heritage of the Savage Rifles. The butt plate on the back has a slight curve to it, and then it's got these little light ridges all down. The trigger guard's large enough for gloved hands. Uh, then you can see the AccuTrigger. Uh, this is polymer, and then your safety is just one of your cross bolt safeties right here. Uh, if you want to hold the bolt back, you can 
push right here and it holds the bolt. Um, it will not hold back after the last round, which is typical uh, for your 22 blowback action, which this is a 22 blowback. Here we have a flush fit 10 round rotary magazine. Pull the lever down and it comes right out. Really easy to bring this in and out. It's very positive. Uh, it is metal all along the back and on top. Uh, and then, of course, polymer at the bottom for weight saving. But this really does well, and it just feeds those rounds. It's easy to load. And it does come with an extra magazine, which makes it nice. Um, I did notice that on GunMagWarehouse.com, the 17 HMR 10-round rotary magazines were $18.99. So you can expect pretty much to pay the same for the 22 long rifle. But they do offer 25 round magazines through Butler Creek. And those are available. And so, you know, you've got your extended magazines if you want it. Or you can go with the flush fit. There's a nice shape to the charging handle that allows you to be able to pull this back. Uh, but one of the things about this is the bolt is just so smooth. Uh, and when firing, it even adds to the smoothness when you're shooting. The receiver is steel and is beautifully milled. Uh, here on the back is what they call the dust cover, and it is polymer. And we're going to look at that when we break this down for cleaning. Now let's take a look at the AccuTrigger. Uh, one of the big pluses is this blade. The trigger pull can be set very light. You can adjust this trigger yourself, uh, which makes it nice to suit your needs. Now if you're hunting, you want a little bit more trigger weight, uh, but if you're at the bench, having a really light, crisp trigger is important to accuracy. And so this blade protects the sear from slipping if this rifle's dropped. And if you have a trigger that's been enhanced by a gunsmith or made really light, uh, when it's dropped, that can be a problem. And so with the AccuTrigger and this blade, it keeps the sear from inadvertently falling. So you can make this a fairly light trigger, or a really light trigger, and still retain a margin of safety uh, with this blade. Now, the trigger itself is just a nice, crisp snap. Let's look at it again. I mean, it just, where you want it. Now, this one hasn't been lightened. This is pretty much factory spec. Let's check reset. right there. This is the human element in shooting. Uh, you've got your finger on the trigger, it's when you pull it. Uh, you know, your rifle can be super accurate, but if you're jerking the trigger, uh, that can affect accuracy. And I think the AccuTrigger is a big plus toward achieving really good accuracy. We're going to be using some CCI standard velocity, some Federal Premium 40 grain lead round nose, and some CCI mini mags. Just trying some different things. I want to thank Federal Premium for sponsoring the ammo. The smoothness of the action made it really nice at the range. Anytime I needed to pull that lever back, uh, of course it's semi-automatic, so you don't really have to do that that often. But when you're charging your magazine and loading, uh, it's just a really smooth feel. Uh, one of the things about a rifle to me that it's smooth, it just functions in the right way. It just makes range day so much more enjoyable. We did have a couple of issues with reliability, uh, but it was very early on, in fact, in fact the first box of ammunition. Uh, I shot about 400 rounds. After those two, with the first box, the rest of the 350 rounds plus, we had zero malfunctions. Uh, it just ran really smooth. And I just attribute that to, you know, maybe just some of the machining processes, uh, you know, when you get a new rifle out. That can happen. 
uh, but I was really pleased that it, we didn't have any other issues. It just ran like a top. Uh, but not only does it run very well, of course, but with the accuracy combined, it makes it for a lot of fun at the range. And then 22 with the low recoil uh, and with the, you know, the low report, um, you know, you can shoot it and you can just enjoy it. Um, of course, 22 is starting to come back and so it's going to be much less expensive as well. Now I'm going to show you how to field strip the A22 for cleaning. Uh, remove your magazine, go ahead and check to make sure the gun is unloaded, and thus you're also cocking the hammer. Very important to make sure that hammer's cocked. All you'll need is a 1 8 inch punch. Now we don't need to remove the scope to do the basic cleaning, uh, but right here you'll see a small little uh, silver disc. Take that 1 8 inch punch, push it in, and then pull up and pull up on the dust cover. And when it pops out like that, you'll notice there's a small lip right here that fits into the receiver. Next, we're gonna take our recoil spring and guide rod, push it backward, and then lift it up. And it'll come right out. Now we can remove our charging handle. And then take the 1 8 inch punch and just bring your bolt back. And you can just pull it right out. Now according to Savage, the A22 can run dirty, but it can't run without lubrication. Uh, it needs to be treated and then right here where it slides in these steps, a little lubrication there and right in here, uh, there's, our, there's still factory lubrication on this one. But that's one thing that you want to do is make sure not just a light coat of oil, but definitely have some lubrication. But now you can also maintain the rest of your rifle from the chamber side. So you're going in from the back and you're able to clean. You can get up under where the magwell is. And this just allows a very easy disassembly for cleaning. Now we're going to return our bolt. And of course with the scope it makes it a little more difficult. But just bring it in. And it should just work its way in. A little bit of finagling, but it should do it. There we go. Now you'll notice this hole in your charging handle. When you put it back into your bolt, make sure it goes in a horizontal position because the firing pin is going to fit right through there. Next, we're going to take our recoil spring and guide rod and go right into the bolt. Now this little area right here fits down into the receiver, but to get it to go into it and to reassemble, we need to turn it to a 9 o'clock position, push it through, and then turn it back to a 6 o'clock position. And it should fit just like this. Now take the dust cover, and we're not going to go straight in, we're going to kind of go at a little bit of an angle. Uh, very similar to an AK-47, how it, the dust cover returns. And we're going to push in, and then snap into place. Just like that. And you should see some silver right here that's part of your guide rod. And we're going to test for function. And we're good to go. The A22 without the scope and the bipod is 5 pounds, 6.3 ounces. Uh, overall length is 41 and a half inches. The retail price on the Savage website for the A22 is $281. Uh, it's just hitting the market, so we're going to, of course, street price will be considerably less. And as that comes, I'm looking at this at about, you know, $225 to $250. Uh, of course, that's probably after it's been out a little while. Uh, but a very reasonable rifle for such great qualities. And I think the AccuTrigger alone is well worth buying this rifle. And I want to thank Savage Arms for sending the rifle for the test and evaluation. It kind of gives us a sneak peek considering these are fairly new and fairly difficult to find. So if you're in the market for a little 22 semi-automatic, definitely take a look at the A22. Smooth action, AccuTrigger. Uh, just very well designed, the stock, everything about it, it just handles well, it's great balance. And Savage has really stepped up its game. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic.
got my E22, got my Part of Guys Maduro. Just taking it down a notch. I got a lot of comments of people surprised that I didn't go to SHOT Show this year. Why should I? I had my own SHOT Show. <laughs> and I had a smoking show too. Oh yeah. 